Hi friends, today we'll learn about the GST or the goods and service tax. Before you understand GST, you must know a little about different taxes in India. There are two types of taxes. They are direct tax and indirect tax. Direct taxes are taxes that are collected directly from the individual. Example of this type of tax is the income tax. Income tax is a direct tax because it is directly collected from the individual based on the income he earns. Another type of tax is the indirect tax. Indirect taxes are collected on goods and services rather than income or profits. Though these taxes are collected at different levels of the supply chain, they are finally levied on the final customer. Example of such taxes are value added tax, excise tax, entertainment tax, etc. For example, if a company manufactures a pen and government collects excise duty on it, then this excise duty is indirectly reflected on the final bill of the customer. Now, what is GST? GST is a tax that was brought to replace all the indirect taxes in India. In India, there are so many indirect taxes. Each state has different slab levels, which is very confusing to businesses. So GST will replace all the indirect taxes in India. Now, let us see how GST works with an example. For example, a manufacturer buys raw materials and manufactures a car. He then adds his profit and sells it to a wholesaler who in turn adds his profit and sells it to a retailer. This retailer adds his share of profit and sells it to a final customer. For easy understanding, let us assume there is a flat 10% tax at each level. So manufacturer makes a car with 100 rupees and adds a profit of 10 rupees. So manufacturing cost plus profit equals 110 rupees. He then pays a tax of 10% on 110 rupees which will be rupees 11. So the manufacturer adds his tax and takes the final price of the car to rupees 121 rupees. Now the wholesaler buys the car for rupees 121 from the manufacturer. He adds a profit of rupees 10 again but he also needs to pay a 10% tax on 131 rupees. So after adding taxes at this level, the price of the car becomes 144.1 rupees. Now this car is sold to a retailer who buys it for 144.1 rupees. Now the retailer adds 20 rupees as his profit. But even he needs to pay a tax on the total cost of the car. So he'll pay 10% on 163 rupees. This will take the price of the car to 180.51 rupees. So the consumer buys the car at 180.51 rupees. Now let us see how GST will bring down the prices of goods. Let us see with the same example. A manufacturer buys raw materials for rupees 100 and manufactures a car. He adds value to it and adds profit of 10 rupees. In GST, tax is collected only on the value added to the product. So tax is collected only on rupees 10 in this case. So manufacturer pays rupees 1 as tax. Now the wholesaler buys the product at rupees 111 from the manufacturer. He pays tax on the profit he adds and the final rate at which he sells the product to the retailer would be 122 rupees. A retailer follows the same method and finally the consumer gets the car at rupees 144. Now, if we compare the final prices before and after GST, we can clearly see that cost of the car after GST is less by 36.51 rupees. GST in India has been classified based on where the product is sold. If the product is sold interstate or between two states, then GST applied is called IGST. For example, if a dealer in Gujarat sells a washing machine to a person in Maharashtra, then the tax collected is called IGST. IGST goes to the center and is later divided between states involved and the center. In another case, if the product is sold by a dealer in Gujarat to a customer in Gujarat itself, then the tax collected is shared between Gujarat and the center. Let us assume that the tax collected is 28% then 14% goes to the center which is called the CGST and 14% goes to the state which is called SGST. Further, GST has been divided into various slabs. 
products fall under these slabs accordingly. First slab is 0% slab. 0% tax is collected for basic items like food grains, eggs, vegetables, etc. Next slab is 5% slab. All products needed for mass consumption fall into this category. Products like spices, cotton, etc. fall into this category. Next is the 12% and 18% slabs which comprise products for middle class people. Products like processed food fall into 12% slab while smartphones fall into 18% slab. The last slab is the 28% slab which contains all sales of luxury items like sports cars, diamonds etc. Now finally let us see what products are going to be costly and what products are going to be cheaper under GST. Bank services, mobile services, luxury items like DTH, healthcare, diamonds and hotels will be costlier. While on the other hand, items like milk, fruits, eggs, cars, tea, coffee and two-wheeler vehicles are going to be cheaper. So this is all about GST. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.